Welcome to the second channel. This will be the first video for the Michael Sabo Extra channel. If you guys are following the Z400 build, and if you're not uh, subscribed to my main channel, uh, make sure to check that out. It's just Michael Sabo. But we're building this Z400 right here. It looked like hell before, man. So uh, we're in the process of doing all the pre-work and stuff, a lot of stuff. Uh, you know, it didn't look like this before. Uh, kind of the late stages of the project, if you're not familiar with the regular YouTube channel. But anyways, I was doing these shocks. You know, if you watch the most recent episode on this video, and if you do want to check it out, there are full episodes with more details of the restoration of this machine. But I did this shock right here. I was going to do that off camera, both of them. And I did this one, and it was kind of interesting putting it together. It, it's interesting to me. But maybe it can be interesting to you too. So <laughs> I figured we will do this one together. The only thing I've done is I've already cleaned it. I threw this in the ultrasonic cleaner. I've got a really nice ultrasonic cleaner and uh, it's awesome because it's really big. So you can put a lot of bigger items in there. Here it is here. It does have some fluid in there and the, both of the shocks just dropped right in there. And all I use is this palm olive, like a decent amount of it and clean water. I've noticed that like if you use the awesome degreaser or any stronger degreasers, it sometimes it'll like discolor the parts. And I think it's because um, some of those heavy duty degreasers and stuff, they've got like corrosive properties and it'll just break down the original finish. And I want these to have the original finish. They came out really nice. Um, they have like little, they're not like 100% perfect, but honestly, like if I was buying a brand new quad on the showroom floor, like I don't even think I'd really scoff at that. Like things even from the factory sometimes aren't quite perfect, but these are pretty damn close. So I think we're going to leave them like that. These are the original stickers, man. These shocks came from Power Sports Nation off of, they had a 2005 Z400 with the updated shocks. So the older, because uh, our Z, Z, Z400 is a 2003 and they didn't have the reservoir shocks. They were just the sticks, the pogo sticks, man. They suck. So uh, Power Sports Nation sent me these and they were in pretty good shape to begin with, which definitely helped. Um, but all of the collars, these little jam nuts and stuff, um, when I took them off, I sent them to get vapor blasted and uh, zinc coated. So these have all new, brand new zinc coated or zinc coating on them. Uh, there's a company called Moto Blast that I use. And uh, you can send them old, rusty stuff, and it comes back and look, looking like this, man. It's pretty awesome. So the other thing is this little plastic sleeve in here. Uh, the other one is actually downstairs, but you'll see it's it's not even close to the condition of this. But basically. Uh, we re I'm going to restore that with you guys, and then we'll just put the shock together because I actually didn't know how to put these springs on before. So I have a tool for that. It's right here. It compresses the spring, and it makes the job pretty easy. All right, so we're in some uncharted territory here. This is a, a spot in the uh, little house. It's not really in the shop, but um, this has been on in videos before. But I've got this new lathe here. Well, new to me. This is a brand new pre-owned. It is a South Bend. This thing is actually really sweet. If you guys are into machines and stuff. You know, you could really geek out on this stuff. We have another lathe over here. This one, you know, we've had pretty much as long as I can remember. I think my dad got this way, way back in the day. It's an old Atlas and uh, definitely really cool machines. There's something wrong with the chuck on this one where it's just like a little bit off. And uh, that's something that maybe in the future will be repaired. But uh, all this stuff came with the new lathe and some of it, I don't even know what it is, but this one is really, really nice. Came from a friend of the family and uh, really, really just awesome because a lathe like this isn't cheap and these old school ones, they're the best, man. This was probably made in like the 40s. I've been trying to find like a date stamp on it someplace and I'm sure somewhere on here we could decipher when it was made, but uh, like all this stuff down here, it looks like there's no markings. So I don't know, if you guys know when this might have been made let me know in the comment section below but it's definitely it's a solid piece of equipment don't mind all the mirrors guys this used to be like the home gym area but anyways here is the other shock piece let me see if we can get some light on there and uh you can see it's not as nice as that other one is i mean the other one looked just like this but we've got like this kind of scuffing stuff right here so uh, what i'm planning to do or what i did with the other one anyways is pop this right on the lathe like so and it just makes sanding this like a million times easier. Easier and quicker because doing this by hand would just take forever. So I'm gonna throw this on the chuck on the inside and we'll just open it up and that'll hold on. We don't, don't wanna go too tight because it's plastic. We don't wanna snap the damn thing. And then basically we'll, just, we'll pop this lathe on and we'll take sandpaper 
and rub it right up against there. I'm utilizing that kit from Prime MX. If you guys saw the last episode on the Z400, uh, I used that kit to restore the headlight on this same, on this, uh, same quad. So I'm gonna pop in my headphones and I'll throw you guys on a time lapse. Uh, I'm gonna go through all stages of the sandpaper. Uh, these are all the ones I haven't laid out from doing the other one. Uh, basically, it's from three. Well, I actually, actually got an extra piece of sandpaper here too, uh, because that scuffed up part was so rough. The 320 just kind of wasn't doing it. So um, we're going to go all the way from 220 to 320, 400, 600, 800, 1000, 1200, 1500 to 2000 grit, and then we'll go upstairs to the buffing wheel. Okay, so here's how it looks after about 10 minutes of sanding. It looks pretty good. Even like this, I was considering leaving it with a little bit of texture because I don't even think from the factory they're like super glossy or anything. Um, here is where it was real scuffed up. Let's see if it'll focus on that. It's still, you can see those marks, but after we do this buffing wheel, uh, most of that stuff will be undetectable. So these are Prime pads. You can get these from Prime MX. And it's got like a, kind of looks like a sprocket or a star. Works really well on plastic though. We'll put a little bit of compound on here. There are two pads. There's the number one and then there's the number two. I think these are the same. Uh, the thing is though, you want to use one with the compound and then the number two you use with no compound. It comes out really nice, man. So let's just get it done. Alrighty, man, there it is. Like freaking brand spanking new. It really does look awesome. I don't want it to be like ultra shiny because I, like I said, I don't think it was like that from the factory. I think this is pretty good, man. That polishing pad does a number on the rubber. This little portion up here, it's like a rubber, like dust shield. And it really shines that up good. But I think this looks really good. Where is our spot? Uh, if we can't find it. That means we did a good job. There's like a little nick right there, but ain't nobody gonna notice that. Plus the spring's gonna go over it. So let's put this bad boy together. Uh, we do have to get the spring on our shock. Here is our shock all freshly powder coated. This is powder coated by my local powder coaters. They are bonehead performance coatings. They do tremendous work. Uh, definitely, if you guys are looking for like really high quality work, definitely check them out and they do work a lot with like motorcycles, quads, dirt bikes. So they know what areas to mask off and stuff and what's important. They're not like a, uh, like a mass powder coater that just does like industrial stuff. They're very specialized anyways. Um, so we have to compress this spring. I used to do like the craziest methods to try to compress springs cause I didn't have the right tools and it was jank. It really was uh, a couple times. I almost like broke things or like the spring flew off. Uh, one of them, I think I caught in video somewhere, but anyways, uh, there's these little rubber, it's, it's literally, I think, just a rubber hose that they trim in half. And we're going to put that around the spring because we don't want to mess up our finish. This is, you know, brand new powder coated finish. So we will put that. There's four of them. And you want to find the right distance. Every, every spring is going to be a little bit different. And we'll put them on both sides so you can see how I got them on there. And then our tool, he's got these two hooks and it's threaded and basically you can see that's just gonna cinch together and it will tighten down the spring, compress it so that we can get the spring onto the shock body. So I'm gonna open this up. You don't wanna go too far like beyond that. You can see it starts to stick out a little too far but you don't wanna strip the damn thing out. It's basically, it's like a, a screw in there and uh, if you don't have enough threads, you could probably damage the tool. So we're gonna hook this on top and bottom. Make sure the hooks are lined up with your little rubber safety, safety bits, we'll call them. Get this on both sides. I try to do it uh, 180 degrees from each other. 
so that you can compress the spring equally. And you can do this by hand. I've done it by hand before. The impact makes it like 100 times faster though. And then we'll literally just tighten this up and I'm gonna go back and forth. You don't wanna like compress it all the way one side, all the way the other side. I think the tool could actually fall off that way. And uh, you'll see the spring, it would like, like curls, but uh, well, we won't see because we're gonna go back and forth. A Little bit there, there. can see it kind of curling back and forth. If we did that by hand, that would just, it takes a lot longer. So is that straight? I want to make sure we got it crimped the same amount on both sides about. That looks pretty good. Now we're going to have to put this sleeve in here. However, you can see it bumps up against the tool on the inside there. And uh, we don't want to put scratches on our plastic piece because we just got done, you know, polishing this damn thing up. So we will do our best here. Take a little bit of packing tape. Got to get creative sometimes, man. If uh, if you just go full ham mode, or sometimes even if you're following instructions, you, you got to go off the path sometimes, man. Make your own rules because other, you know, not every set of instructions works for every job. You got to you got to improvise, man. So we're going to use a little bit of painter's tape. And this will prevent any scratches on our freshly finished. Man, this damn thing. Can I get this in here? There we go. Our freshly finished uh, shock tube. Now we'll take our tube and it's gonna have to be stuffed a little bit because it has to wedge between the tool. But it tucks up like that. Now, before I put this in, Remember, most shocks, you can see the coils are wound a little bit tighter at the top, and then they're more open at the bottom. Almost all the time, I don't know that I, there's any of them that go the other way, but the tight coils go to the top. I've gotten quads and, and side-by-sides before that the coils were reversed. I had one, the coils were, were up on the one side, and then on the other side, they were at the bottom. So just make sure you're putting the coils at the top. Uh, before we do that, we got to put on, we've got this little, um, for the adjusters, these adjusters here, and you see there's a flat portion and then a rounded portion. It's like a little raised. The flat portion goes up, at least on this LTZ 400. So thread these on real quick. All of these, this is the original stuff uh, sent to Motoblast. And they're all, they've got new zinc coating. A little tight there. And then we've got this one here. And I'm threading these all the way up to the top so that we have uh, the least amount of compression on the spring just for install. So this will slide over, go over our shock bumper here, and then there's two little grooves at the top that keep this from spinning. Now we can put our shock in place, our spring. Might be a little snug. There we go. Okay. And you can see now, because the spring is compressed, we've got a gap at the bottom there. And what we do is got these two half moon things and another, oh, damn it. I messed up. Let's take this off real quick. Forgot to install. There's one more piece. All right, we're good. No marks. This piece here goes over top. I also want to put a little bit of lubricant. This is a waterproof lubricant just on the inside where this guard rides along the shock body. Now we can pop this in place. Okay, slide this over shock body. Okay. And then we've got these half moons and I'm doing them. There's an, there's a sharp edge side, and a rounded side. I'm putting the rounded side facing down. Push that up as high as it goes. And the half moons slide inside. Like 
that and I'm doing them so that they are, the little split is lined up with the bolt hole on both sides. That doesn't really matter. It's like one of those little things. And uh, then we'll just take the spring off a little bit on each side, just like how we put it on. And as you're coming off with this, you gotta make sure that the half moons don't pop out. Mine are good now because they're inside the retainer, but sometimes like if the spring is really high up, sometimes it's tough to keep them in there. Okay. Get our tool off, our little rubber pieces. The tape out of there. And boom. Basically got a brand new shock here. You know, I like to make sure everything in my life revolves around what I'm doing in the garage. You can see even the color scheme of the drinks that I'm drinking match the color scheme of the quads and the bikes that we're building. Anyways, we've got great results here. Basically got brand new um, shocks from a brand new pre-owned 2005 Suzuki LTZ 400. I will have the tools linked in the description below for the polishing kit so you can take care of these plastic sleeves. Even though you could probably go out and buy those replacement sleeves for $2.49 or you could spend hours restoring them like I did. But uh, <laughs> whichever way you decide, and I actually don't know that you could replace those. Uh, I looked for them and I couldn't find them. Maybe you could, but I like to restore things. So, And I'll also have, this is the kit with that uh, spring compressor in it. I'm telling you, man, I used to use like ratchet straps and shit like that and just dumb stuff really because like when you're dealing with these compressed springs and when you do, do bigger shocks, like if you're doing a side-by-side -side or even just the rear shock on a sport quad, you can actually you know, get hurt. <laughs> so this is a great tool, it's pretty inexpensive. It'll be linked in the description below. If you wanna see the rest of this machine being restored in detail, check me out on my main channel, it's just Michael Sabo. Uh, it's an awesome build, dude, it's really cool. Uh, make sure to uh, head over there if you already haven't, and if you want, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. There'll be more updates on the other projects in the shop. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it also, that helps me out tremendously. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.